Yikes. I need to clear off some of those bobbins. Hi Sandra, how are you? Sarah, hello! Making a mess. Just go over there for a minute. <laughs> I am doing okay today. I got some, I made Rice Krispie treats earlier. So, that's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> they were delicious. Ever since you started talking about marshmallow fluff last time, I wanted, I've been wanting Rice Krispie treats, and I finally made some today. Cinnamon buns, yum. Hey, Sarah, you found the emotes. Hi, other Sarah. We have two Sarahs in here. <laughs> Even spelled the same, it looks like. Hello, the insomniac mom. Welcome. They were just okay. I mean, okay cinnamon buns are still better than no cinnamon buns, so that's not terrible. The fun of the Sarah. Yeah, so I did have a little bit of time to get a few emotes put up, so uh, I'm glad to see that they're working. I have one that says pocket crafts, and then uh, another one, I think I just did the little motivated by spite logo that I already had made up, and then there's a gummy bear. Uh, yes, we were talking about bobbins being wound on the sewing machine. Did you try it? Did it work? Can't get used to winding bobbins this from this direction. <laughs> Trying to retrain my brain to do this. Kind it kind of worked. I've wondered about because you know they have the little um, the machines that are bobbin winders that are like a whole separate machine, and I've kind of wondered if those would work better. Can't find the gummy bear yet, Sarah. I I think it's in there. Maybe it didn't upload it. Right, I'm not sure. Hi, Doran. How are you? Yeah, see, that's... Sandra, that's what I was color... Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry. My brain's a little bit tired today, y'all. Um, that's what I was worried about, was, like, the thread tension, whether the tension would work right, because generally sewing machines put a little too much tension. Uh, yes, yeah, same color on both shuttles today, yep. We're into the easy part now. It's there in spirit. Yeah, it's there somewhere. <laughs> I just don't know where. I haven't really, like, I keep talking about how I need to sit down and figure out all the random things that work on Twitch. And I just have not had time. Didn't, yeah, didn't want to turn it. That's, yeah, I can see that.
Maybe I'll have to get a hold of one of those bobbin winders and see if it works. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Very interesting. Thank you, Sarah's mom. I am really just like ridiculously pleased with myself with how good that one turned out. Especially because partially, partially through it, I was uh, not very happy with it. Yeah, that is kind of surprising, Sandra, that it doesn't fit more or even the same amount. Uh, the opulence collar is the one is one that I just put up the TikTok for last night and then haven't really posted anywhere else. Uh, I posted a the tick reposted the TikTok to my Facebook page and to my Instagram and I'll probably share pictures in the group. Uh, yeah, it's the one I posted this morning. I'll share pictures in the group later. It sold like before I could even get it posted anywhere else. Uh, but that pattern, that design is gonna become a pattern uh, for the Pattern Club. I'm thinking for April, I may do that one. So be excited. Hi, Imrail, you made it. Just for a few minutes, I'm assuming. I know you said you had other stuff to do. But yeah, it's one that has uh, a lot of beading and some different beading techniques that I've not used in the past. So I thought it would be fun to do for a pattern. Half an hour. All right, cool. Well, I'm glad that you decided to uh, spend a little time with us today, at least, Imro. Excite, excite, yes. Yes. Looks like Celtic knots. Um, yeah, I guess it kind of does. Now that you say that, I really hadn't hadn't looked at it that way. But yes. I plan to make several more of the that design in a few different colors and uh, change it up a few ways. Cause it was it was fun to make once I got past the the once I got past my frustrations with it not working the way I wanted I feel like almost every pattern like all of my best patterns at least like there's a some part in the process where I get really frustrated with them and put them in timeout because they make me mad because they're not doing what I want <laughs> and then they turn out fine okay so I just went ahead, I had some extra, well, quite a bit of extra thread on my bobbin from uh, the row two that we did last week, but I just went ahead and wound my two shuttles completely full uh, CTM continuous thread method anyways, because I know, whoops, I know I'm going to end up needing to refill this bobbin at some point, and this way I can start with no ends, and then when I need a refill, I can just pop this one in and it'll be ready to go. Yeah, Sandra, the Trinity knot. Yeah, the, I can see what you mean um, with the three rings that meet together. Now that you pointed it out, I see it. Hi, Maywin, how are you? There we go. Got that ready, got that good to go. What's coming for March? Uh, so for March, I decided to finally do the Duchess earrings that I did, oh my gosh, uh, over a year ago now probably, um, that Sammy has been asking for the pattern for, for forever. Uh, so I'm, I'm probably gonna do those for March. And we haven't had an earring pattern in a while, so I know y'all like the earring patterns. And that one is a little bit of an advanced pattern because it has the um, tat over a ring technique. But other than that, it's actually pretty fast and simple. So it's a good mix of uh, challenging, but also 
not a super complicated project. So that'll be good before diving into uh, doing the opulence pattern before um, for April, if I'm going to do that one in April, because that one's a lot more in depth. And then we just had this pattern, which was a little bit more in depth. So take we'll take a little break in between and do something that's a little bit more of a, a quick finish. I mean, you don't have to do CTM, Sarah, if you don't want to. I just, you know, I, I like to. And just because it's easier for me to weave my ends in as I go if I'm in the middle of a piece versus at the start. Uh, and I, I like... One of the reasons that I do, do my ends the way that I do uh, is because I like to make sure that my thread... Where, where my threads are woven in are kind of staggered. So whenever possible, if I'm not weaving both shuttle threads in and starting new at the same time, uh, I try to make sure that they're offset because it's a little bit stronger that way, if that makes sense. I, I'm gonna explain that a little bit better in the video I'm working on for the hiding ends, um, which is taking me far too long to edit, but... It will be up eventually, I promise. Yeah, just like it, to have them not be in the same spot. I don't know. I, I get very um, particular about like considering long-term wear of my pieces just because I, I do sell the things that I make. So like I feel like that should... Like, it doesn't make a difference in the finished product right now, but it may make a difference, you know, in five years. And so I try to keep that in mind. I'm going to give it a little bit longer so we can make sure that, see if we've got everybody in here that is planning to be in here before I start. Yeah, I do feel that's important, especially with something like handmade lace where you are making it with the intention. You're you're making something that has the potential to last lifetimes. So whenever possible, if you can keep that in mind and choose better techniques and better materials um, when you have access to do so, then I think you should. <laughs> At least... In my opinion, I prefer to, let's say. I'm not going to tell other people what to do with their stuff, but for my stuff, that's that's something that definitely plays a factor into the reason that I do things the way that I do things. everybody's actually here already today. It really is kind of strange when to think about things um, or like consider how long things could actually last. You know, we see pieces of fiber arts and, you know, clothing and costuming in museums and stuff and think, wow, it's really neat that the stuff that they made lasted for, you know, 100 or 200 years or longer. And we don't always think about the things that we, we are spending time making lasting that long. And I think part of that is because, you know, fast fashion culture uh, has permeated our society so much that even with our hand makes, we don't really, we don't think beyond the immediate use. Um, so I think it's a good practice to kind of just keep that in mind and think about it. All right, I think we have enough people in here. Uh, are y'all good to go? Let me know if you are ready to start. Or if we need a few more minutes.
Almost. Okay. We'll give it a... We'll, we'll wait on you. That's no problem. Usually, we end up waiting until about half an hour in to start or somewhere around there. So, I don't mind waiting a few more minutes for you to get ready. And I know several of the rest of y'all are not actually stitching along today. And that's fine, too. <laughs> All good. I just didn't want to jump in and uh, ha leave y'all behind. Oh, Dara Strix, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope that everything's okay. I hope that at least watching can maybe help a little bit. Because I know how that is sometimes. Oh, yikes. Yeah, that is extremely frustrating. Started on the second to last row. So you started on the second row, Sandra, or the second to last row? I'm confused. Um, how do I control a bunch of edging? So, I don't know that I've ever, <laughs> yeah, doing it with a size 40 is going to be, like, really small. Oh, on your doily. Yes! Hooray! Congratulations, Sandra. That's so exciting. Um, Doran, I think, so I don't really make super, super long pieces like that as much, but there are actually uh, people I've seen get, like, a little, um like wrist bag, uh, like just a small drawstring bag that they can keep on their left wrist where the piece is at and just kind of like keep the excess in there. Uh, or like keep it rolled up on a piece of cardboard or something like that. Yeah, roll it up on a card and like pin it in place can kind of help. Just kind of depending on. Yeah, most of the things I've seen are, are kind of just like random things that people just grab whatever they have. Uh, but I have also seen some little like bags and like project keepers that were specifically designed for that. But in general, they're just like a little, uh, like a small drawstring bag or something, small project bag. I've seen people use. Yeah, I mean, tatting is not nearly as delicate as what we tend to think of it, but uh, it could potentially get a little tangled up, yeah. Like earphones usually do. Yeah, probably. Maybe a little bit. one piece that's long that I have worked on on and off for like the past three years but I think that's the longest piece I've ever uh, actually really even attempted to make a long piece for you're ready okay excellent I think we're good to go then go ahead and get started okay so For row three, we're actually going to come up here and start this little teeny tiny ring that joins right at the base of uh, where our row two ended. So if you were making this in one solid color, you could actually do this as a split ring. Uh, but with our color work, we need to go ahead and start anew. And it's just going to be one little teeny tiny ring using our same stitch count as everything else. 
and just join it right in there. Now, when you make this join, you want to make sure that you're actually getting into that pico there and not just around the ends uh, of the chain, like the top of the chain. Because if you don't get actually into the pico, it's not going to be as securely anchored and you risk pulling out the ends that you have woven in where you started. So just try to make sure that it's like right in, right actually through the pico when you make that join. He's just a little teeny tiny buddy right here. And then we start on with our next chain, which is chain B. So that was our ring A for this row. And then our chain B, and we're just continuing our pattern of two Pico two through the whole thing here. And this chain here is going to be the chain that ends up being used as the closure uh, that you tie the ribbon through. Not that it really makes a difference when you're making it, but just so you know. Split rings still intimidate you. I promise you that split rings are so much easier than, than it seems. It's hard to get the tension right so they'll close. I mean, realistically, they close the same way a regular ring does. Um, it's just where your your thread ends up, where your thread ends end up, <laughs> that changes. But I can definitely see if you're not used to doing those unflipped stitches, and yeah, it can be uh, a little tricky to get the tension right. Okay, and then our ring C is again joined to the base of this very, very first ring we made. And this is also a little tricky. Um, it's a little more secure here because even though we have extra threads uh, for the thread color woven in, this is still continuous thread method. But if you were starting, if you had started this with two separate pieces instead of continuous thread method, you want to be really, really careful and make sure you don't pull out any of your thread ends from when, where you started that. So the best way to do that is to kind of uh, pay attention to where you're sticking your hook through when you go to make the join. And if you can, try to get that little, um, if you do posted rings, there's that little half of a stitch right there. And if you can get through that little half of the stitch, that's gonna help make it a lot more secure so you don't end up pulling anything loose. Yeah, remembering not to flip the stitches can be, um, a, <laughs> it definitely is something to try to get your brain around sometimes. Um, but like with the way that I do my chains and also the way that I teach, uh, I try to get my students used to doing those unflipped stitches from the start. And I think that really does help. Dear Strix, I'm glad that the posted rings helped you. Cause I really, I really feel like they just close smoother and like, they don't just look nicer, but they're easier to work with. Yeah, Sandra, if you are somebody who naturally keeps a tight tension on everything, learning to loosen up can take a long time. And I know from personal experience, because I used to tat very, very tightly uh, to the point where me tatting with a size 10 
would end up looking like most people's size 20 like with the the size of the stitches because I was pulling it so so tight yeah posted rings are the rings with the little half stitch at the end okay so now I have my little ring A, chain B, and ring C. So I'm going to move on to my chain D. Uh, posted rings, I think, are actually easier to open, for me, at least. But again, if you, if you tat really tight, if your tension is really tight, it's going to be difficult to open a ring no matter what just because of how tight the stitches are pulled. Yeah, because that extra half of a stitch, I, I just feel like it gives you a little wiggle room to really get in there. All right, so that was our chain D, and now I'm on to my ring E. And now we start to get a little bit fancier with our rings. So this one is gonna have two picos and then the join. <laughs> Thanks, babe, yes. If you didn't happen to see it on Facebook, which I blasted like all over the place, uh, but I had some of my TikToks featured by Unilad on Facebook and it has over uh, almost 2 million views. Yeah, already, which is really exciting. I think that's really cool. Even though I'm not like seeing very much, uh, like, not very many people are following through the post to actually go follow me, but it's still really cool to be like, yeah, I was featured, my content was featured on there. Um, so this ring E is joined to the center pico of that very first chain B. So right in the middle there of our first Scully's little mouth. Yeah, Sandra, I mean, I, I very much knew what I was getting into uh, with the way that they do credit and stuff. And the fact that they do even credit is still really nice. Um, so, like, I, I knew what to expect going into it. Okay, and then we're going to finish this ring out with three more picos. Hello, welcome. All right, so we are almost through the beginning start of this row that is more difficult and then we will be into the repeating part, which is a lot more fun. So we're gonna move on to chain F and make our three picos. Chi Chi, no, this is not, this is actually, uh, we are making my darling collar pattern uh, from my Patreon Pattern Club, which is, which page is it? this pattern so this little collar with the um hidden scollies in the design uh ring e joins to the center pico of our first little scully so right in the middle of his little mouth with there right there if you can see that does it help if i hold it up a little higher there we go Yeah, so this is one that I had worked on on a couple of different TikTok lives and ended up making the uh, pattern club pattern for uh, this month for February. Almost forgot what month this was already. Um, yeah, so we are doing a stitch along for this. But 
you are more than welcome to just hang out with us and chat. Okay, so that was my chain F, which is just three little picos. And then the final section here for our setup is gonna be our ring G, which is going to connect that ring E uh, back to our little throne ring from row one. And then we will be into our repeating section, which is a lot more fun. Yay. Yes, we love the hidden skulls. So our ring G is gonna be two picos, and then this third pico is gonna join to the second pico, or the, the middle pico of ring E. So that's a little tricky to keep up with. I know it's picos everywhere. <laughs> picos all over the place. Chi Chi, yes, there's two different uh, pattern levels. There's the $3 pattern level, which is basically all of the patterns that coincide with the lessons. Uh, so those are patterns that I wrote when I very first started putting the lessons up and they are a lot more simplified and they're designed to be things that kind of help you practice whatever I teach with the lessons that go with them. The pattern club is a little bit different where you still get access to all of the lessons and the patterns that go with them. But the pattern club, I do a new pattern every month um, and it's exclusive to that month. So at the end of the month, I take it down and then put the new one up for the next month. Uh, and these patterns are a lot more in depth and the projects are a lot more in depth and detailed. So that's why there's two different tiers for the patterns. Uh, but there's still like, I think almost 20 patterns in the $3 tier. So it's still a really good price. And a lot of those $3 tier patterns are some of my more popular patterns. So lots and lots to love there still. Okay. And then in for our ring G, we've got one more pico that's gonna be a little decorative pico right at the top. And then we join to the uh, down pico, this very bottom pico to the left on our first throne ring from row one. And then we make two more picos to finish this guy out. Yeah, totally understand that. And if there's ever a pattern that was part of the pattern club that you, you really wanted that pattern, you can always sign up for just that month uh, and then like cancel or change your subscription at that point. Or the pattern club patterns are always posted to my shop uh, as individual PDFs to purchase the month after they premiere on the Patreon. So it's a little, I know it's a little confusing, but like that was the best way that I could figure out how to set it up. So like the patterns are still available to people who are not in the Patreon. It's just that the Patreon Pattern Club gets first access to them basically. All right, and I always have trouble with these larger rings. Still room for improvement. There's always room for improvement. So now we are into our chain H. Uh, yeah, the Patreon, the Pattern Club is $12 a month. Um, and then the patterns that are from the Pattern Club, when they get posted to my shop, they range in price usually between 12 and $20. So with the Pattern Club, you still get a better deal um, because not only do you get first access and you get access to all of the lessons, uh, but you also get one standard price on the patterns uh, versus they may be posted at a little bit of a higher price when they go in the shop. But I also know that like not everyone can uh, do a monthly subscription or wants to do a monthly subscription. So, so chain H is actually going to start our repeat. 
And this one is gonna be five picos, and it's gonna be our longer chain. Yeah, so honestly, in some ways, the pattern club is just like a way to keep me motivated to actually get patterns finished uh, because I am have far too many projects going on. And if I was just going to be like, oh, I'm going to publish a new pattern on my website one, one a month, I probably would not be as uh, dedicated to getting them out on time. So it's great for y'all, but it's also nice for me to like have that motivation to actually get them finished and get them published. All right, so our next ring is our ring I, and it's honestly the same size as our ring G, uh, and it's gonna have that same uh, two pico start as our ring G, but it's not going to be connected to ring G at all. It's connected only to this uh, throne ring from row one. And this is going to be what helps give this row a little bit of breathing room so that it can spread open when you block it out and keep that nice curved shape. And that curve is what makes it sit across the shoulders nicely. because human bodies are not rectangles. So we've got our two pico and then we join to our throne ring on the opposite side. So we've got our ring G joined over here and our ring uh, I joined over here. So this throne ring is what connects these two. They're not connected to each other. And then we're going to complete four more picos. Yeah, I really do uh, feel like that size 10 works a little bit better for jewelry, for the style of jewelry that I do, I should say. There are plenty of people who make really beautiful, lovely pieces of, of tatted jewelry in size 20, uh, but the, the style of patterns that I make, they just, they have a little bit more weight to them, I feel like, and they're a little bit sturdier, so... That's one reason I use size 10 a lot more often. And I just like the way it looks. It's, it's just my preference. <laughs> okay, so ring J here is our smaller chain. And it's just going to be three picos. Yeah, Sandra makes a lot of my patterns in a size 20, so a lot of them can be adapted for smaller sizes of thread. So it's not impossible, it's just that's not what I use the most. Okay, and then our chain K here is going to be attached to, or our ring K is going to be attached to our ring I and to the next throne ring. And it is the uh, second to last pico from the ring I that it gets joined in with. Yeah, Sandra, I, I feel like you're just a professional, like, pattern collector at this point. 
there's a couple of y'all that are like that and that's perfectly fine i love it i appreciate it but yeah i don't i don't feel like there's any pattern of mine that couldn't be made in a size 20. it's just you may have to adapt things a little bit um for sizing or and it's just going to give you a little bit of a different look Okay, and then Ring K has two Picos before the next join to the throw ring. <laughs> and again, joining to the bottom Pico on the left. And then two Picos to finish. I'm really bad about hoarding uh, sewing patterns for like things that I will never make. <laughs> like, I have so many sewing patterns, y'all. So I, I totally understand. Like, I get it. I really do. Yes, the crowns. I have two different crown patterns, actually. Um, and I would love to do more. I've been thinking about doing some more. And I, I like the crowns in the chunkier thread. I think they turn out just like a, a little bit more crown-like. I don't know <laughs> if that makes sense. You make them, they're just out of order. Yeah. So uh, now we are to the point where we are just going to start our rep repeat again. So I'm starting back with the chain H and just repeating that all the way across. And that is our row three until we get to... Uh, the very last throne ring and then that's where we start and mirror our uh, finish or mirror the way that we did the beginning yeah Sarah that last row on the uh, sovereign pattern can be a little tricky if you don't have the tension right because mine kind of pulled in a little bit too but when I tried making it looser uh, and like adding a few stitches to the repeats it it went too much the opposite direction so uh, I opted to have it pull in a little bit more because then when you block it out it will stretch out versus if it's a little bit too far out to begin with, it's harder to like block it inwards. Uh, a diadem, I could do a diadem. I think that would be a great idea. Hi Noelle, welcome. Yeah, actually the first attempt I made with the sovereign pattern with finishing the bottom rows, I did it a little bit differently and it ended up splaying out so much that it uh, would be perfect to put on like a bell sleeve. So I saved that piece for future reference to maybe do something with it uh, in the future. We'll see. Yeah, I would really love to start doing more, uh, like, cost not costume, but, like, fantasy, I, I guess a little bit costumey pieces uh, and patterns. So if there's ever anything that y'all have a request for a pattern for, let me know. I can't promise that I will absolutely do it, but I will definitely keep it in mind. And I'm always looking for new ideas. Oh, yeah, Sandra, good idea. The, the wig clips would work really good for that. Eclectic wearable items, yes. Things beyond just collars, which I know y'all love the collar pattern, so I will continue doing the collars. And people love to buy the collars, so those will never go away.
Yeah, Sandra, I, you know, you know that we have, like, we have the same haircut, so, <laughs> same. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, Darastrix. It would totally work with a larger um, yarn. Like, if you wanted to do it with a size 3, even, and, like, make it super chunky, you would just need uh, fewer repeats to get around. <laughs> Something silly, like a tissue box. I'm pretty sure, I think they're, I think I've actually seen a tatted, like, tissue box cover. Um, that's not really my, my speed, but I did do, uh, was it last year or the year before? Maybe it was 2020. I don't remember. But at one point I made tatted eyebrows, like fake eyebrows. <laughs> so maybe I should put the pattern for that up. Like a little tatted purse or something. Oh, I have absolutely seen mask patterns. Uh, Pamela, uh, gosh, what's her, uh, what's her actual, like, shop name? Uh, is it Totus, Totus Mel, I think? Um, has a needle tat, a pattern for needle tatting, because she's a needle tatter, um, for, like, a masquerade mask. Yeah, the, oh, like, a face mask. Yeah, I did a face mask with some tatted accents. Oh, that would be cool, yeah. So the one that I did, uh, the mask was primarily sewn, and then it was basically just uh, some edging patterns. Actually, I think it was probably just the Jubilee pattern, uh, just like down the sides. <laughs> so, like that was really pretty simple. Um, but like an act, like the f to do the full thing, that would take some engineering. I'd have to. I'd have to. Yeah, the one with the spikes. Yep. I also thought about doing like a, a belt of some kind, like just like a decorative belt. Maybe like a corset belt. Yeah, I got a little bit sick of making masks. When the, when the whole thing happened, I made Gosh, I don't even I don't even remember how many, probably close to 500 masks to send out various places uh, to people who needed them. So I got a little I got a little sick of them myself. Yeah, like a little accent belt, or like um, there's a shop that I follow that does like ribbon belts that have like the clasped hands as the clasp. Bye Imrel, have a good day. Uh, but like they're, they're basically just like a piece of velvet ribbon, like a really thick velvet ribbon with these really fancy clasps. And I was like, ooh, something like that would be really cool. <laughs> Sandra. It would definitely be a larger project for sure. It really would.
I also have some ideas for like, um, like harnesses, like tatted lace body harnesses that I think would be really cool. So we'll see. Yeah, ooh, I know, it's exciting. So I have one that I'm working on right now, actually, that's a body harness that is for a custom order. Um, but then of course, working on that gave me like a bunch of ideas for other different ways to do it. Um, so like now I wanna try a couple different styles. that I think would be really neat. Yeah, so like if I was gonna do a, a pattern for like a tatted corset, see corset belt and corset are not really the same thing because a corset belt um, generally is not as difficult on the sizing, <laughs> I should say, uh, to like make, so like it would just be like, corset belt referring to having like lacing in the front or something, not like an actual corset that's going to cinch your waist in. But I very much want to do uh, as a special project, a tatted corset that is a mesh corset with the gold, uh, the metallic gold thread and tatting over it. But that would not be something I would do a pattern for. That would be just like a a special project just because. <laughs> yeah, it would be really cool, yeah. Tatted corset covers would be lovely. Yeah, see, the my issue with that would be like needing to do the sizing. I try to um, avoid things that need like um, really detailed sizing when I do patterns. Ooh, a tatted piece in the middle of like a, yeah, like the strappy harness bralettes. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, fuck sizing. I can do sizing like for myself or like for one specific person, but then to like try to explain to somebody else how to use my extremely chaotic disaster seamster methods for um figuring out sizing is like that's not gonna happen of course you bought the pattern i have a pattern a similar pattern from uh house morgan patterns uh for a bralette with the strappy pieces i don't know if she ever released that one to be honest uh because it's my friend yvonne <laughs> so i did pattern testing for her for several things and then uh, life things happened. So she hasn't been doing patterns as much, but she has some really great patterns up. Yeah, I've made several bralettes, but I'm really particular about which ones I like because Again, sizing can be difficult. Yeah, you should definitely check out her patterns. It's House Morrigan. Very, very inclusive sizing. Really well drafted, really well done. Oh wait, oh wait, 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 what? Uh, yeah, I probably did post pics when I tested that one. It's been a while ago now, but yeah, I would have definitely posted pictures somewhere at some point <laughs> for something uh, when I tested. I've tested a few for her, a few different ones.
Yes, there was, uh, gosh, I don't remember which pattern it was, but there was a green velvet bralette that I added some tatting to. A long time ago. That I would probably do extremely differently now. <laughs> really wild to consider like how far you can grow how much you can grow as an artist in just two or three years like the things that I'm interested in making now I would have never attempted when I first started doing this I gotta drink my water I haven't drank enough water today Yeah, the harness one I did. That's right. Um, yeah, the harness pattern I added. That's that's what I did. I did that and then made the pattern, and it's bobble. It's the bobble pattern. We should do a throwback post in the group. That's like a really good. That's a really good idea, Darastrix. I really like that idea. Somebody remind me to actually do that. I think that would be awesome, especially because we've had a lot of new people join the group lately, which is awesome. I'm really excited about that. So I, and a lot of people who are really new to tatting. So I think it'd be really great to show like progress over the years of like when you first started versus where you're at now to just like encourage people. I really wish that I still had like my first tatted piece just to show y'all like how awful it was. <laughs> yeah, you did Sandra, yeah. And I don't know why I didn't think of doing a thread like that, but we should. Strikes. I had somebody comment on my TikTok uh, just yesterday, I think it was, saying that they've wanted to try tatting for years, but they've been really intimidated, even though they do macrame already and thought that it looked very similar. And I was like, I actually used you as an example. I was like, yes, I have somebody in my group right now who just started tatting and does macrame and picked it up like really really fast because it is so similar so i was like you should totally try it and i think you'll find it a lot easier than what you're expecting because i think macrame is probably the one craft that would give you an advantage to learning tatting Sarah, I love that. I think it's really important to keep some art, like our older pieces. You know, I do think I have somewhere some little pieces uh, that they were not my first pieces, but they are older pieces. Um, I should go look for that and maybe pull those out. Wanted to make a flogger for macrame, but it took forever. I can imagine. Dang. Yeah, once you uh, see, and that's the thing, once you learn that flip, everything else is really easy. I tell people that all the time, they don't believe me. <laughs> you have most of your early pieces. That's awesome. Yeah, like, part of it is because, part of the reason I don't have uh, very many of my earliest pieces is because we moved a lot when I was a kid, and I, I learned when I was, like, nine years old, so... Um, 
every time we moved, we would just basically get rid of, like, everything except the essentials. Like, we had a yard sale every time we'd move because my parents didn't want to pack a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so, like, things like that just got thrown out. Uh, so that's one reason I don't have very many pieces. And then, like, another reason is because I'm just not super sentimental about stuff. Probably because of the fact that all of my belongings were tossed, like, once a year growing up. So, um, I just didn't keep very many pieces. And I really wish that I had. Yeah, Noelle, I feel like also um, being around people who are positive and encouraging and just like very supportive helps you, it helps your mindset in a way that makes it easier to see your progress even over a short amount of time. Because like I have noticed so many of y'all in the Facebook group like you post your first projects and then you post a project in like two weeks and I can already see like a visible difference. Um, yeah, you know, it could be an ADHD thing too, Sandra, you're right. But like, I don't know, I feel like when people feel discouraged when they first start something uh, in that, you know, it may be not looking like what they want it to look like it's harder to stay motivated to continue improving. Uh, and that's where one thing that I think our group is really great about is like encouraging people and just being really uplifting. And I'm really, really proud of just the general vibe that our group has. And I think that plays a huge part in how quickly people progress and um, see progress and just, you know, are happy with their work, wherever they're at. Maybe that's just me being a little sentimental about that, but, you know, <laughs> I'm not sentimental about things, but... Sarah, I, honestly, uh, the groups are about the only reason that I'm still on Facebook. Like, that's, that's about the only thing I really do on there. But our group has definitely picked up in, like, engagement over the past six months or so, which is really awesome. And we just, we have a very generally, like, chill vibe. Very relaxed, very uplifting. Like, my mods are great. Love my mods. Could not, honestly couldn't do it without them. Uh, yeah, so, like, if you were going to rejoin Facebook for anything, I think that would be a good choice. Someone remember 799 for you. Well, if any of us forget, it will be in the chat replay, so. Yeah, and uh, I think having, like, small, like you said, small pieces um, help not to get discouraged, too. I'm sure Sandra can tell you all about the frustrations of working on larger projects. <laughs> I think you started that doily, what, like, two years ago? But you're so, you're getting so close. Was it two years? November. 
You started that in November of this year? Of last year? Who was it that started a doily, like... Okay, I'm I'm losing my mind then. I'm sorry. <laughs> I must be getting confused with somebody else. <laughs> then yes, you are doing a fantastic job. Who was it that started a doily, like... Dang. Now, now I'm confused. I swear there was another doily post then that was ongoing. Because there was someone who I thought who had started. No, it was definitely a tatted doily. Um, somebody who had started a tatted doily and like abandoned it for a little while and then picked it back up. Not, not including me, because y'all know I have. <laughs> yeah, Chi Chi, I think it was somebody specifically in the group. I don't, maybe I'm just like completely imagining things, which is entirely possible. I do that sometimes. I feel bad now, Sandra, I'm sorry. <laughs> But look at how far you've come. I mean, that is, that's definitely some motivation there to get it done, so. I don't know how many doilies I've started, like, in the round patterns I've started and then never finished. I've never finished a single one, I don't think. I mean, technically I could call them finished because they're all my own patterns, but, you know. <laughs> it's to tell the person so you can't get out of it. Yeah, that's one way to do it. issue with finishing doilies is that like I just don't have a use for them once they're finished like yeah I could hang them on the wall or whatever but that's about it yeah I feel that I feel that but then at the same time I'm like you know I don't want to do like a doily or like a really long piece of edging or any of these other like really big projects because I know I'll lose focus but then at the same time like I really want to make a tatted dress like a whole dress and I'm like how is that any better that's not any better <laughs> right good luck right <laughs> oh and not like a cute little like sundress like thigh length or knee length or anything easy. No, no. I want to make a full length tatted ball gown because it would be amazing. Right? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, fully tatted and then lined. Yep. The whole thing and beaded don't forget the beads break it into chunks mentally probably the only thing that's holding me back is needing to like figure out how to do the shaping and like sizing of course beads yes <laughs> I honestly I think that I could finish it um, because I think that's one of those projects where, like, I would tell enough people about it that they, <laughs> they would, like, either, either two things would happen. I would have people constantly asking me about it and making me feel guilty for not working on it. 
or I would have somebody, it, all it takes is one person to tell me there is no way you will ever finish that. That's impossible. You should just give up. And then I will have to finish it out of the sheer spite because you all know how I am. <laughs> Oh yeah, I would need to like make the make the pattern out of like sewing for like sew the pattern first and get that situated. To like have something to go off of. I mean, spite is like my sole purpose for living so <laughs> like that's all it would take is just the one person <laughs> Sandra <laughs> thanks for that <laughs> I have some other projects I have to get finished first and then we'll see what happens for maybe next year Maybe I'll just, like, take a break from doing literally anything else and then just do that. <laughs> Y'all. <Yo. laughs> I've created monsters. Cause I was trying to decide even like what color I would do. Cause like, obviously I want to do black. Like, obviously I did. I did tell you to tell me, get it into a museum and demand royalties. I mean, Hey, listen, if I actually finished like a whole ass dress, I think it would deserve to be in a museum. Like that is definitely something I've never seen anybody else do. Like black see that was the other thing I was like but I could do uh like the underlining in black and then do like a silver or or something on top or purple or red or whatever then I was like but what if I did an ombre dye on the underlining with like the black tatting on top Because y'all know that I love my ombre dyes. And loads of shiny beads. So many shiny beads. Like, I would need to buy an entire truckload of beads <laughs> to finish this. It would also be a very expensive project. Just from the basis of like the sheer amount of beads and and thread and time <laughs> like oof I can't even imagine but I also kind of wonder I'm like you know ooh navy to sky blue with the black tanning ooh that would be gorgeous like sometimes I wonder I'm like you know if I really just like set aside three months to work on it. Could I really finish it? Uh, Lisbeth dies extremely well. I have done it several times. Yeah, I could do white, white tatting. See, that's the thing is I was, that was kind of my plan. I was like, I could just get, um, the, the Lisbeth cones and then dye it afterwards. But A, I need to know, I still need to know what color I want because, when I start, because um, I need to pick the beads. And then also, they discontinued the cones, so that's a little disappointing. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's another problem, too. You're right, they do have different dye lots, uh, so I would have to potentially um worry about dye lots if I did a color whereas the black is pretty much black always 
So like doing the black tatting, I would have a better chance of not having like weird dye lots in between. Yeah, if I did the white, it would be similar too. But then I'm like, you know, if I was just gonna dye it black anyways, like just make it in the black. And y'all got me talking about it and now I wanna do it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Ooh, a red ombre, oof. Yeah, if I was like really conscious of the dye lots and like planned it out ahead of time, I could make it work. I also, like the way I had planned to do it was to do motifs. Um, so like rounds that fit together rather than trying to do like rows. Oh, yeah, Doran, like, there's, like, I really have no reason to be doing it. I just really want to. Yeah, like, lots and lots of little motifs. I think that would make it a little bit easier to, like, stick to doing it too because then you don't have like each round takes forever to finish the reason is that it would look fabulous yes exactly maybe I should start smaller and do like a shirt or something and just see how it goes y'all know that's not gonna happen I'm gonna I'm gonna jump right right into the whole project head first Uh, Doran, my mother was absolutely like that. Make what you're, make what will actually get used or else it has no purpose. Uh, fuck that. I'm gonna make fun things. I'm gonna make things that actually make me excited to make them. <laughs> the only way to do a project is to start the one that will make you cry. <laughs> I need that tattooed. <laughs> That's like... Same, Sandra, same. And also now all of y'all have been telling me that I can't do it, so now I have to do it. <laughs> but you know what would really, like the part that would make me cry is if I actually did it and got it done and then posted it and like nobody saw it and it like completely flopped and like nobody cared. <laughs> like. I would, I would cry so hard. Cause like, that's kind of what happened with the Witchlore project. Like not, not really, but a little bit. Like it didn't get the amount of attention that I hoped it would get. So like, it was kind of like, wah, wah. <laughs> like. Yeah, Doran, we'll have to start like a, uh, we'll have to do like a big project challenge of like, what is the one thing that you have always wanted to make and never thought that you either could or like talked yourself out of doing for whatever reason. And like, that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, like Sandra, it got, it got some attention. Like it did pretty good, but like not, it was like, I wanted it to go viral and it didn't. And I was like, aw. See, you're halfway there. You even did a mock-up. Perfect. Sandra, I, I spent too much time uh, as a seamster sewing clothes to be able to have that mindset because no, we, 
We make mock-ups. <laughs> oh, the outer fabric was a disappointment. That's... That's... I understand that. That can, like, totally kill a project. Sandra, I used to be that way, but I had to, like, break myself of it after I ruined uh, some very expensive fabric one time and was really upset about it, so we don't do that anymore. But also, when I do mock-ups, they are, like, very- they are mock-ups. They're, like, I don't do finishing techniques or, like, all of- like, they are garbage. <laughs> The worst is that, um, oh yeah, with corsets you have to do a mock-up. There's no getting around that. I've made a few myself. And I actually honestly really enjoy sewing corsets, but like the mock-up and fitting process is so tedious. Cotill is, is really interesting to sew, um, because even on my machine, which, you know, I have a vintage machine, so, like, it'll sew through tin metal, it's, <laughs> like, it'll chew right through it, uh, but it still, like, sounded like I was sewing through cardboard, like, it's so weird, um, but once I got past that part and, like, just the general stiffness of it, it's okay. I think it might be more, like, I'm used to sewing with leather and stiffer canvases and, like, heavier materials because of where I used to work. So I think that helped a little bit. And, like, the boning was super easy, but I use, uh, synthetic whalebone, which I actually like better than the steel boning. So, that also helps. <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> Sarah. I think that's something you can kind of work around. Just, just kind of fake it. <laughs> Split the Pico if you have to. Between both rings. Yeah, Sandra, I think it took me about, like, a year from, like, buying the supplies and, like, planning and, like, reading all of the posts and blogs and how-tos and Facebook groups and all of that before I actually made my first one. And I ended up making my first one in, like, three days because uh, we were going to a wedding and all of my formal clothes were very feminine and... I was not feeling very feminine at all that weekend, and I was like, no, this is not going to work. So I sewed a whole corset in like three days <laughs> for a wedding. Uh, and it actually turned out pretty good. It was not terrible. Like, there's definitely mistakes in it, but I'm, I'm still really proud of it. I still wear it sometimes, actually. How much did I sleep? Um... Not very much that weekend. <laughs> but I also think that um, having a good pattern helps. Like, I had the, I used a Corsets by Caroline pattern, and, like, I really, like, I still did a mock-up, but it really didn't need a lot of adjusting to, like, fit me properly, so, like, that helped. But I definitely had to do some funky things at the end because uh, I messed up a few pieces <laughs> and like had to had to fix it real quick. Yeah, Sandra, that's actually like an old uh, um, an old like saying, I guess that's really 
popular in like Ireland and a couple other places of like, especially it's like, I think it started specifically with um, Irish crochet with wanting to make sure that there's a mistake in the piece so that the pieces of your soul can get out. I've always kind of liked that idea. It's really just an excuse to leave mistakes in. Yeah, <laughs> probably. There's probably some truth to that. Yeah, but it just sounds better. Yeah. It's like, no, I meant to do that. That was on purpose, I swear. <laughs> Almost halfway. Getting somewhere. Happy little accidents. Yes. Totally meant to trip and fall up the stairs. I would, I have absolutely no idea what you mean by that. I would never do such a thing. Not me, that wakes up with mystery bruises almost every day. <laughs> mm. Gotta take a hand break. <sighs> My wrist hurts today, y'all. This weather is killing me. It added drama. <laughs> uh, I did not, I, I had a bag of uh, potato soup from the last time that I made potato soup in the freezer last week. Um, or whatever, yeah, whatever day that was. Uh, so I just like thawed that and eat that. Uh, but the next time I make potato soup, I'm definitely gonna try it with the caraway very much looking forward to that. Yeah, darn Rice Krispies. Just testing that gravity still works. <laughs> yeah, about that. Yeah, the Rice Krispies did not help my wrist at all, but you know, it is what it is. I needed Rice Krispies, damn it. Craving a Subway sandwich today? I don't know that I've ever craved a Subway sandwich. Not that I could eat one, but... I don't know what I'm going to have for dinner. My kids are off doing stuff. Uh, my daughter was invited to a birthday party. Uh, which, by party, I mean it's just her and her one friend. Um, and my son is at his grandparents. Because he wanted to be over there instead, apparently. So... I don't know that I'm even going to have anybody else uh, besides me and Aaron just to worry about for dinner. So I don't know what we're going to do. It's totally fair. Sometimes it happens. I crave weird things sometimes too. I do have ingredients for cauliflower soup right now too. And I, that sounds pretty good. Burger King chili cheese bites. I didn't even know they had chili cheese bites. Eat Rice Krispies for dinner? You know what? I would. I probably will. <laughs> With cheese. <laughs> I did at least have some real food for lunch. So, you know. I'm good. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's like a Europe thing. I don't know if they... I wouldn't know because I don't really eat fast food. Um, because all of it is cooked or fried in canola oil, which is one of my sensitivities. So, like, if I do have it, I have to be really careful. And pickles, yes. Gotta have the pickles. And I still need to make a pickle emote. <laughs> so we can have pickles. <laughs> Polish dogs. What's a Polish dog? 
I don't know what that is. Like, one of the places that I can get french fries from and be okay as long as I don't get them too often is from Wendy's. And, uh... I, I really wanted Wendy's french fries yesterday and Aaron was gonna get me some but the line was too long and was like not moving at all so I was like forget it and so I didn't get any french fries. Maybe I'll have french fries for dinner. I've got some freezer fries I could heat up. A spicy hot dog. Interesting. Oh, yeah, Wendy's fries, like, with a Frosty or with a strawberry shake. Oh, so good. Unfortunately, I can't have the Frosties or the milkshake part anymore. Oh, yeah, Noelle, that makes sense. That's good to know. That is definitely good to know. Yeah, because I was, like, I also know, like, some places, um, like, McDonald's, and a couple other places soak their potatoes, like, their fries and hash browns and stuff in milk like before they freeze them and with a dairy restriction that would be why they fucked me up so bad um yeah so and I know Wendy's does not do that and then if they switch the oil to corn oil that would definitely make a big difference for me And yeah, it's really frustrating because most places it's vegetable oil that they use. And if you ask them, they'll say vegetable oil. Well, vegetable oil is not really specific. It could have canola oil in it or it could not. And most of the time, like, they don't even know. So if it's vegetable oil or canola oil, I can't have it. <laughs> oh, the corn took it away from you. I'm sorry. But yeah, like they, I can eat there and then uh, Five Guys is really good. I can eat there and have no problems. And they're also really good about like allergens and cross-contamination. Like if you tell them that you have a gluten issue, like they're very careful about that. So like those are two fast food places that are about the only places I can eat. Polish sausages are smoked and then with spices. Oh, that's, that does sound pretty good. Hot dogs without bread are just kind of weird sometimes, though. I'm usually too lazy to make my own hot dog buns. <laughs> Oh no, Max! Oh, yeah, I've made the little, like, hot dogs and crescent rolls. I've made those for my kids a whole bunch of times. I could probably do my, like, cheater puff pastry uh, recipe and try them like that. Hot dogs hit different in Europe. Good to know. If I have ever have the opportunity to try one, I will do so. Sausage rolls, yeah. It's 
like hangover food. <laughs> I try to avoid hangovers, but comfort food is still good sometimes. French fry bun concoction? Oh, that sounds amazing. I mean, I would assume that, like, most of Eastern Europe knows how to do, uh, like, processed meats like that, like sausages, because that's, like, a staple food there, so I would expect that they would be pretty good. So, Noelle, are they, like, potato-based or, like, actually french fries somehow? Fries in a hot dog bun. Oh, interesting. With cheese and sausage, sauces and maybe a sausage. That sounds really intriguing. Wonder if I could do that without the bun part. Cause like cheese and sausage and hot dog sounds pretty dang good. hungry. I swear y'all y'all bring up food just to make sure that I eat, don't you? Like that's your whole goal. I I know what's going on. I don't know how to pronounce that, Sandra, but I will definitely look it up. The fries sandwich. I mean, you really can't go wrong if it has potatoes. <laughs> okay. Better not be eating my Rice Krispie treats. You make your own Rice Krispie treats. Those are mine. I risk bodily injury for those <laughs> Rice Krispie treats. Yes, Metal Gearhead is Aaron. That's my partner. He likes to hang out in my streams and then just like randomly interject problems. <laughs> Making pies, yum. Yeah, because I knew that if you helped, you were gonna like take claim to my treats. <laughs> We're having Rice Krispie treats for dinner. You're always my biggest problem. But you put up with me, so it's it's evenly divided. Shh, Sandra, that was a secret. We're not supposed to talk about that. <laughs> We've been like this like since we first started dating like I don't I don't know how it got started but like a lot of times if we're out in public together like people assume that like we hate each other and like don't get along. 
Because we're kind of mean to each other. But, like, it's it's mutual and it's consensual. That's the important part. <laughs> it started with me hitting you. I didn't actually hit you, okay? Let's be, let's be very clear. I never actually hit you with the baseball bat. I chased you around with the baseball bat because I was gonna hit you, but you ran away too damn fast. <laughs> tell tell you, uh, so that's actually how we met. Like, that was before we started dating. Um, that was the first night that we met. Uh, so he was friends with one of my best friends, and, um... I, I don't know if I've told y'all before, but, like, I grew up in a really conservative, uh, house. Like, we were at, we were in a cult and all kinds of weird shit. So, like, I didn't get to go places and hang out with other, like, normal kids very often. Uh, but one night, we told my mom we were gonna, I was gonna sleep over at her house. And we went to, uh, what we all at the time called the lot. As in the parking lot, because it was literally just the parking lot in front of the library. Because there's nowhere else to go around here, because we also live in a very rural town. So, we go to the lot, and there's all these people there that I don't know. So, like, she's introducing me to people, and I don't even remember what he said. He said something about me being short, which is completely accurate and entirely true. And also, I'm a little sensitive about sometimes. Uh, so I got really mad, and I grabbed a baseball bat from the back of his car, which, why the hell he had a baseball bat in his car, that was on him, uh, and I chased him around with it, because I was gonna beat his ass for calling me short. <laughs> I was a little bit, um, yeah, I, I was, I was not always the nicest kid. <laughs> uh, I was 17 at the time. And I think it was maybe like three or four months later that we started dating. <laughs> uh, yes, us short ones are the ones you gotta watch out for. No, Sarah, I am definitely not your height. I am five, well, my, my driver's license is five foot one and that's with my docks on. <laughs> I am, I am, in fact, very short, and also a little bit volatile about it at times. Tall personality, yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, he, he said I could, okay? He was like, because I was like, I'm going to stab you with this. And then he was like, do it. And I was like, okay. And then I did. And then everybody was shocked that I did. And, like, he he said to. <laughs> yeah, wild times. We were... We were dumbass kids. I, I tell you what. <laughs> yeah, so romantic, right? It was not Aaron that I stabbed. It was somebody else that I stabbed. But he was there for the stabbing. Also, that tool was a lot sharper than what I realized it was. I didn't expect it to go all the way through his hand, okay? So now you know, I am not always the nicest person. <laughs> My reputation has been ruined. He was there for the stab. Yeah, what a line, right? <laughs> I definitely had some anger issues <laughs> as, a, as a teenager. It's fine. I'm in, I have therapy, it's fine. As your bodyguard. That's what it's been this whole time. 15 years and I just now figured that out. God damn it. <laughs> oh 
Oh, good lord. I can't believe y'all got me to tell you stories about my teenage rebellious years. Oh, yeah, Noelle, it was, there was a lot. There, like, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> like, whew, it took me more than 10 years to figure my shit out after leaving, so... Oh my god, the Scrabble games. I forgot about the Scrabble games. Yeah, I get a little aggressive about Scrabble. <laughs> I get a little aggressive about games in general. Like, I'm. this is one reason I can't play, like, video games, because I get too serious about it. And, like, it's just, it's just not healthy. And Sarah, when we were talking about Monopoly and how I haven't played Monopoly in a long time, that would be why I haven't played Monopoly in a long time. How do you aggressively play, Scra play Scrabble? Well, first of all, you have to be somebody who is a little bit of a bibliophile and takes grammar and language a little bit too seriously. Uh, and then you have to play with people who are not that. <laughs> then you also have to have uh, a, a volatile personality on top of it. <laughs> I'm a lot more chill now than I used to be. I think that's I think that's true of a lot of people though. Like, I'm not a grown up, but I I have definitely grown up a little bit. Since when do I lose most of the games? You know what? Fuck you. Rude. <laughs> it only took you four hours to play Monopoly? That's like a really short amount of time for a Monopoly. <laughs> Get out of here. Can't stand you. Your grandmother thinks hitting people is part of Uno? I, you know what? I can see that. Like, that makes sense to me. A card game you named Torture? <laughs> okay, I need that story. That sounds fantastic. Just drawing cards and hitting or pinching people? Yeah, that sounds exactly like something we would have come up with as kids. a really fun game to play when you're drunk, Sandra. <laughs> Nerts or pounds? I don't think I've heard of that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no rings or long nails. Well, I'm already ruled out. Damn. 
I think this is one of the things that I really like the most about uh, Dungeons and Dragons and the way that we would gen generally play uh, was always extremely violent and very heavily focused on like the kill things aspect rather than like the role playing aspect. Um, and I think that's kind of what I miss about it the most is like having an excuse to just be incredibly violent. <laughs> Simi based on solitaire, but you're competing to get rid of your cards into the middle? That's interesting. That actually sounds kind of fun. And I say the therapy is helping. I mean, it is, but also, like, if I have a little bit of a, a violent personality, like, that's not gonna change. <laughs> right, healthy outlets. It doesn't stop you from beating people up. It just, you know, makes sure, sure you're doing it in a healthy way. <laughs> Right? He's still alive. It's fine. Look, that part's not my fault. Oh, he's incredibly dramatic. Y'all have no idea. <laughs> like, at some point, whenever we eventually have the tatting convention and y'all get to meet him, you'll, <laughs> you'll see. He is so much drama. And he says he's not, but he is. <laughs> What are you even doing in here, babe? Did you get tired of playing Star Wars or what? <laughs> the, yeah, cue the am I the drama? TikTok, yes. Oh, I love that sound. How many of us now think entirely in TikTok sounds? <laughs> Pretty much, huh? So you decided to come in here and bother me. It's like have an upgrade for emojis or, or gifs, yeah. this is going to be the last one of these that I make for a while because I am very over this pattern. <laughs> like, I like it. And it was fun the first, like, two or three times. And now I'm bored. But we're going to keep going and we're going to finish. I say GIF or GIF. Like, I say it both ways. I don't care. You know what I mean either way that I say it. It just depends on the day. Oh, please. Out of all of the things that you have ever pronounced weird ways, that's going to be that's going to be your limit. Right. Okay. Sure. Ooh, yum. Sandra, nice. I guess you know what you're having for dinner tonight, huh? I still haven't figured out what I'm having. Oh, 
Oh, <laughs> the rest doesn't look super enticing. <laughs> I hate when that happens. Look, Dare Sticks, y'all can say it however you want. I got over, like, I used to be a real stickler about, like, correct pronunciation and, like, correct grammar. Uh, and then I realized how, like, racist and ableist and, like, absolute garbage that is. So now my philosophy is that if the other person you're speaking to understood what you said, then you said it correctly. <laughs> like... Browsing the app for the next two hours and then decide not to order. Yeah, that sounds about right. Oh, yeah, like, I'm never going to insist that you say it, like, one way or the other way. Also, it's one of those things that really doesn't come up in, like, spoken conversation that often so like that's one of those arguments where I'm like how often are you talking to another person and you have to have like the gif versus gif like question in conversation like I don't know it just seems a little ridiculous Tomato. I ha okay, so fun fact. Uh, I hate tomatoes. I do not like to eat tomatoes. I don't even like ketchup. That's gross. But I do make tomato sauce, like spaghetti sauce. Uh, so, like, I guess that counts. But it's got to have enough spices in it and, like, seasonings and herbs or whatever that I can't taste the tomato. But also, April, I'm assuming that you are talking about, like, the tomato versus tomato conversation, too. Like, that's another one where I'm like, people are going to know what you mean no matter which way you say it. So it really doesn't matter. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh yeah, a lot of stuff is very regional. Like the amount of time that it took me to stop asking for a Coke when I meant like just what people here call like soda or pop <laughs> was ridiculous. Like it took me years to stop saying Coke as a general like word for any fizzy drink. specific drink. Yes, it is. It is also any fizzy drink. It depends on the context and who you're talking to and what area of the country you're in. So like growing up, if you went somewhere to eat, if you wanted a Coke, you would just say, I want a Coke. If you wanted something else, that was a fizzy drink, you would say like, I want a Pepsi Coke or I want like a 7-Up Coke. Like, <laughs> that was just how you asked for things. That was how you ordered things. But see, like, I'm okay. Like, that's the other thing though, is most people in the South, like if you say I want a Coke and you give them a Coca-Cola, they're going to be fine with it. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Sandra. Other places, I'd probably get a weird mix. Uh, it's just one of those things, like, I never thought twice about because I grew up with that. 
like, 7-Up Coke was not a common one, but, like, generally, so, like, sometimes you would say Coke for, like, any fizzy drink, but a lot of times it was, like, any dark fizzy drink, so, like, Pepsi or Dr. Pepper could also be Coke, and if you wanted a Coke specifically, sometimes you would say Coca-Cola, um, or, like, if you wanted an RC Cola, you would have to ask specifically for an RC Cola. But if you go to a place and they only have one dark, fizzy drink option, then you would just say, give me the Coke. Like, because that's the only option. And it's close enough. <laughs> it really depends, like, so much on, like, context. And, like, there's a lot of nuance to it. That, like, if you didn't grow up with that, like, you just, it, it's very confusing. Yeah, so it's, like, we say Coke as, like, a general term, but it's not always general. Like, it just, it just depends on the... <laughs> and a lot of places, um if you go and like would ask for like Sprite, they're gonna bring you whatever lemon lime soda they have, whether it's Sprite or not. Like, it, it's just really common to refer to things by like their brand name. Ooh, chocolate Coke. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, Sandra, so like if you ordered a cola and like they, like it's the same as ordering like cola, cause Technically, Coke, the brand name for Coke is Coca-Cola, so you're still te kind of technically doing the same thing. I really like Cherry Coke. That's one of my favorites. Right, like, I know it's not... Partic it's not, like, specific to Coca-Cola, but, like, a similar concept of referring to a drink as, like, I don't know. Like, uh, it just... It's all just so regional. And, like, it just took me so long here like we'd go somewhere and like you read the menu and they have like Dr. Pepper or they have Pepsi and I would say you know oh just give me a coke and they would just look at me confused and be like we don't have coke and I'm like yeah you do it's right there it's a Pepsi coke like <laughs> oh raspberry coke interesting I don't think I've ever had that Sticky tape as Tessa film? That's interesting. Uh, another one would be like Band-Aids, because like Band-Aids is a brand. Or Tempo for tissues. See here it would be Kleenex. Come to California. I would love to come to California, Sarah. Very much, very much on my like someday, hopefully soon, um, list. Yeah, like fries as chips or and and chips as crisps. Like it's it's like those kinds of differences are really fascinating to me. So, Sandra, over there, do you have lemonade, or is it is your lemonade a fizzy lemon-lime soda? Because that's another one that was really surprising to me to learn, is that in most parts of the world, if you order a lemonade, it's, like, fizzy. So, I guess it's more common in, like, Australia and a couple other places, but if you ask for a lemonade, they bring you like a 7-Up or a Sprite, like a lemon-lime soda. In the U.S., a lemonade is like a juice drink made from lemons. It's not fizzy. Okay. 
And all of the Sarahs are from California. That is so funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, see, Sandra, if you if you ever come to the U.S. and you order a lemonade, the drink you are going to get is not going to have bubbles. It's not going to be fizzy. It's literally lemon juice and sugar. And, like, that's it. And water. But, like, it's lemon juice and sugar. Like, that's it. You would be disappointed if you were wanting, like, a lemon soda, but it's not. But, like, if you know what... If you know what you're getting, like, definitely try it, but it's completely different, yeah. And, like, that was one that kind of surprised me to learn, but, like, then again, it kind of made sense. Biscuits? You were shocked about biscuits? Because cause their biscuits are cookies, right? And here, biscuits are something totally different. Yeah, I bet you were very confused to hear people talking about biscuits and gravy, right? <laughs> Come visit me and I'll make you biscuits and gravy. Yeah. Mmm, biscuits and gravy sounds good. You tried it when you were in Colorado. Did you like, did you like our biscuits and gravy? Although Colorado is not the right region for good biscuits and gravy. You got to go more south for that. Oh, Daristrix, what's the difference between American scones and European scones? I didn't know there was a difference. The biscuits were similar to a brioche bun? Then no, you d you have not had proper biscuits and gravy. Yeah, no, you 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 have not had biscuits and gravy. Then you had something else that was <laughs> that that honestly makes me a little bit angry. <laughs> My very southern heart is is a little bit sad to hear that. You come here and visit me, and I will make you proper biscuits and gravy. Oh, see, Dara I I think of scones as being, like, dry and crumbly. Not, like, cakey. That's interesting. Yeah, chicken and waffles is, like... It is one of those things that does sound kind of weird, uh, but is good if you can eat or like fried chicken. I haven't been able to eat fried chicken since my second pregnancy. Sarah, hop a plane. I will feed you. I don't have much, but I know how to cook some good food. Oh, round versus triangles. That's interesting. Uh, good ones don't give you the feeling of dust in your mouth. You mean scones? Because, yeah, that sounds disgusting. I've made scones before from scratch. Um... And mine are, usually are more like flaky and crumbly, but I do them very, very similar to the way that I do my um, fake ass puff pastry <laughs> that uses my pie crust as like a base where I would use uh, frozen butter. So they end up very like flaky and layery. Oh, interesting. Yeah, the ones that I made were blueberry, and they definitely had the blueberries, like, mixed in. Yeah, Sandra, they are 
intensely, like, very labor intense. Like, they, they take some work <laughs> to make properly. So I don't make them very often. More as like, a, I think the last time I made them was like for Christmas morning or something. Ooh, yes, cheddar scones, yum. Ugh. My fingers are starting to stop working. Ooh, mixed berry scones, yum. Yeah, I feel like the frozen butter really helps get that, like, tender flakiness to it. So they're not, like, dry, but they're still crumbly. You either love or hate fruit scones. That's interesting. It's, like, that divided, huh? wait until I can come to Ireland and visit you and you can show me all the like food differences. We'll just spend a week like going to all the different like restaurants and eating. The pronunciation is always a debate. What's the difference in the pronunciation? Ooh, that's smart to grate the, the butter with a salad. I've thought about getting one of those salad shooter things. Um, cause like standing up to cut veggies is difficult for me sometimes. Uh, and I think, was it you Sandra that mentioned having an electric cheese grater? And I started looking into them and then it brought up like the salad shooter stuff that you can also grate cheese with. And I was like, Ooh, that's a good idea. Oh, so like scones versus scones. Why would you say scones? Okay, I guess that makes sense. Sure. Interesting. It's more of a thing in Ireland. Okay, because I've never heard anybody here pronounce it scones. But with it, like with an Irish accent, I can kind of like, I, I get it now. Like I can kind of get it with if it's a specifically Irish thing. Oh, interesting. Fruit scones aren't a thing in Austria or like scones in general. Scones in general. That's interesting. It's so funny how, like, regionally there can be, like, such a really strong opinion about certain things. In Canada, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I always see, like, I know Canada is, like, more directly, like, physically attached to the U.S., but I always, in my mind, like, associate uh, Canadian, like, culture more with like British culture. I don't know if that makes sense. Oh, so close to the end, but I think my hands are done for the day. No more. It's after four anyway, so I guess technically we're past our limit. Whew. Even though these bottom rows are longer, they go a lot faster than the first row because you don't have that color work. I still don't know what to eat either, Sandra. We'll have to see what I got. 
I just picked up groceries this morning, but I didn't have a chance to go through and make sure they actually gave me what I ordered. It's past nine there already. Well, if it's past nine, then that means you can eat anything. Like, just whatever sounds good. Bye, Sarah. Thanks for stopping in and hanging out with us today. It was really nice to just know that you were there. <laughs> Have fun at the store. Too much choice. Yes, I'm going to give my hands a rest, and I'm probably, the music just ran out, so that's usually my cue that it's, like, about time to go. Um, ooh, chicken masala. Yum. Yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up here for the day. I think I made some pretty good progress on my row three. I hope that those of y'all who are stitching along made some good progress, too. Or just enjoyed the general vibes. <laughs> oh, any final questions before I go? Uh, yes, it's always fun. You did a split ring. Congratulations. Good job. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, I got to hear some stories from my wild, wild youth. Oh, my God. <laughs> Can't believe y'all got me talking about that. Oh, single shuttle split rings are, like, completely different. So, yeah, I that's, like, a whole other, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, two shuttle split rings are easy. Yeah, so uh, next week, same time, 2 p.m. EST, and we will be doing our final row, our row four, and that's going to wrap up our stitch along. And we will have made it through the whole pattern in one month, which is really kind of exciting. So, um, yeah, and as always, this replay will be posted sometime this week uh on the YouTube. So if you need to go back and rewatch any parts or missed any parts, it will be up there. Uh I've I've been trying to get them out on Mondays or Tuesdays, but it's been more like Wednesdays that they've been up. Uh I'm glad that you're enjoying the pattern. I think it is pretty fun. Yes, and now and then everyone can hear my wild stories. I don't know if people watch that far into the stitch along replays or not. That's a That'll be an interesting thing to kind of see um, how how much of the replay people are actually watching. <laughs> uh, Daristrix, you should totally do that. I have uh, kind of been wanting to do that myself, but also, like, I, as I said, I'm a little bit over the pattern. Um, so, yeah, make a little Scully choker and then, like, post it and show everybody because I think that would be really cool. It would be really neat to do it with beads. You should do it with beads. Yes. Okay. All right. I am going to jump off of here and then uh, go figure out what I'm going to eat. So, as always, it was super fun hanging out with y'all. And uh, I will see you all next time. <laughs>